Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 AM. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife and Resources Agency. Good Saturday morning, everyone. Once again, it is the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray show. All things you want to find out about what's going in the outdoors in the Mid-South Eat area, out, you can find out about it on Outdoors with Larry Ray, whether it be hunting, fishing, back packing, bird watching, dog training. There you go. All whatever right. you want to find out, you can hear about it on Outdoors with Larry Ray. And now, without further ado, <laughs> the one and only, the oracle of the outdoors, <laughs> oh, Larry Ray. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Frank. Uh, and John Gordon, he can no way compete with you today. You're on today. Because we're getting ready to talk I'm about. I'm motivated. Yeah, you you got get ready to talk about one one of your favorite guests and one of my favorite guests on Outdoors with Larry Ray. When Frank first introduced me to Jack Combs uh, several years ago, and Frank's uh, passion for what he does, and uh, and we do again want to congratulate Frank uh, for the award. Where is it? Let me get it right here. Here it goes. All right, Russ Rivas presented longtime hunt test secretary Frank Barton with this award for his 20 years of outstanding service to the Master National Retriever Club and the American Kennel Club. And I know, Jack Combs, you've known Frank for a long time. Uh, Well-deserved, right, right, Jack? Absolutely. I, I speak for the other presidents who were the other Master National presidents who were there, and uh, is well-deserved. 20 years of service, unparalleled. Absolutely unparalleled. And he has to keep up with uh, uh, several dogs every year, as well as I remember, because I've got some of the books that Frank Frank's <laughs> Frank's an award winning book author. If you know some of the <laughs> bit longest pages, I always love to get. Did I get a book this year? I, yeah, I, I meant to bring it with me this morning, oh, but I'll I, bring it the next time. Yeah, I bet. Okay. I have it. I have one for you. You do? Okay, I do. that's a nice hat too you got on too. <laughs> you know, I mean those kind of things. But Jack Combs, uh, again, welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray he, out of Advanced North Carolina, uh, Na- Master Nationals. And, and you tell us a little bit, because uh, you, you told me all about this. Folks, you remember Jack. Of course, he raises poodles. And what makes Jack uh, so uh, uh, notoriety is that uh, he doesn't raise poodles to compete in the Westminster uh, Kennel Club <laughs> event he raises poodles and puts them to action in duck hunting and action in retrievers. And, Frank, why don't you introduce Jack for us here? Well, I, I met Jack many years ago, and when I, when I first met him, uh, it was at one of the Master National events, and it was simply, uh, there's the poodle guy. There's the poodle guy. Okay. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> you know, let's face it, in, in retriever world, I mean, anybody, you know, it, most of us know labs and golden retrievers and Chesapeake Bay retrievers and things uh-huh, like that. Right. But nobody thinks about poodles. Most people do not think about poodles. Uh, but Jack does. And Jack is uh, uh, unique in that not only does he train retrievers, r- poodles, yeah. but he's very successful yes. with them. And that, and that so, leads and, us up to what and this, so this Jack, year's event. Jack this year... Uh, with uh, a relatively young dog named Dime. Yeah, call uh, named Dime. Call named Dime. Uh, uh, passed the Master National event for the third time. Third time. And uh, earned recognition in the Master National Hall of Fame and got uh, some additional letters out beside, a title out beside uh, his name, uh, Master National Hunter. Uh, beside Dime's name. And as I told Jack, uh, I watched Dime that week. Yes. Every time he ran, I was, yeah. in, the, I was in the sound truck watching. Uh-huh. And I told Jack as he came off the line, I said, you know, not only are you the first, this is the first poodle to become uh, an MNH dog, it may be the only one ever that gets to do this. <laughs> and And it's unique in that. So... Uh, Jack has a different perspective on dog training from a lot of us because he trains poodles. Well, let's and, let's uh, talk about that, yeah, Jack. That, let's that's, talk that's about that, the story. Jack. Uh, I, I know you've told the story on this show before, but uh, to my listeners that might not have heard it, 
about how you got into this side uh, of what you do. So despite what most people think, poodles were originally a very old German hunting breed. Um, And actually, puddle in German means to splash. Uh, My wife and I were in England, and um, I grew up, we were in England and went to a game fair. And a game fair, Larry, is like a a large uh, country fair, but there's a lot of demonstrations going on. Yeah. And... um, we went to a demonstration of uh, retrieving and handling in the water. And I grew up in Ohio, and in Ohio, there's not a lot of water. And I grew up with mostly flushing dogs, hounds, and the occasional pointer. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we went to see a, a, a demonstration of a dog that was going to run a blind in the water. And it just so happened this was a German black poodle. Oh, okay. Okay, uh-huh. so you know, I, so we're watching, and this guy sends his dog into the water. The dog goes into the water, and he blows a whistle. Well, the dog turns and starts treading water, and I thought, my goodness, look at that! That's amazing. Yeah, he gave the dog a cast. The dog turned and went back. I thought, oh my goodness! <laughs> went back, crossed the water, came up on land. He gave him another whistle. He stopped. They gave him a different cast. After that was over, I tell you, I was hooked. It changed your, we, it changed your life. This. It changed your we've life. Got it. Absolutely. It changed yeah. my life. And all the dogs that we've had along the way have introduced, introduced us to some of the most marvelous people across the country. So not only have we had fun with the dogs, we've met a whole group of people that we would never have known otherwise. What is, how do you feel being called the poodle guy? I mean, uh, you know, uh, it, it doesn't bother me in the least, actually. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in some respects, it's, it's an advantage because people underestimate what the dogs can do. Yes. So they see they see a dog that's well groomed and looks really fluffy, and they think, "Oh boy." Yeah. Uh, when a dog does a good job, they overreact the other way. Yes. Oh, very yeah. abusive kind of kind of uh, thing. Uh, so it doesn't bother us at all. They're different than labs. We train them differently than you do a lab. Um, and we have poodles because I'm allergic to dogs. Okay. Uh, I cannot have a lab in the house. They just too much dander, what have you. But we can't have poodles. So what do you do? You say you train them. Poodles. You train them different. What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, um, they're they're they can't take the pressure, uh, the collar pressure that labs can. Oh, so okay. they're we don't use as much pressure, use more repetition, and my voice. Um, and they they want to please, so as a result, they react to the voice a lot more. Um, that's the main differences. And because they are a, a groomed breed, you can't keep these dogs on trucks. Um, uh-huh. Okay, so you, you're not going to see a poodle on a pro's truck. Okay. At least I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, we're talking to Jack Combs uh, out of Advanced North Carolina, the Master National Retriever Club uh, champion. We'll talk about Dime, because I know that's not his real name. His real name is uh, what? I can't remember. Frank told me. but uh, Duxbury, my 10 cents. Uh, dime sounds um, good. Uh, uh, that's and what, we call her Dime because of that. Um, and she's connected to her mother, whose name was 10. Okay. So carried, carried on the tradition. Yeah. Uh, Dime has passed the Master National three times in 2009, 10, 2021, and 2023. Amazing. And she's the only poodle to do that, and we're very, very proud of her for that. Um, very proud of her. Well, As a matter of fact, I had, I had a lot of tears in my eyes coming off the line, Larry. A lot of tears. He wasn't the only one. There was a lot of – it was an emotional time, the way I understand. It was. Uh, you were seeing something that hadn't been done before, uh, and that's pretty – Well, not only that, but knowing how hard yeah. Jack has worked uh-huh. over the years. Remember yeah. I told you earlier, it's not the destination, it's the journey. That's right, yeah. Well, yeah. Jack's journey has been extended. Uh, Jack? Tell us. How many times have you gone out – in the last series of the event? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I've gone out five times. Five in the, times? In the last series, yes. 
And it was probably my fault, Larry. It probably it was probably my nerves, um, you know, knowing that it was significant. If you get one more pass, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame, um, all that kind of stuff. But um, it, and as Frank points out, it is the journey that, that, that matters and all the people along the way and all the great dogs we've seen along the way uh, have just been a, a marvelous addition to our life. Well, I can remember my great friend Buck Gardner. Uh, it took him uh, 11 times to win the world championship of duck calling. And uh, he won it finally after 11 times and then came back the next year and won the champion of champions. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's all in that journey. And how old is Dime? Dime is nine, um, and she has a, a daughter who is our next, next prodigy, I okay. hope. Uh, <laughs> I hope. You hope, yeah, yeah. Is the pressure there? Do you, do you thrive under that, Jack? I mean, uh, the people expect so much, and uh, how, how do you relate with your, your, with your dogs on that to keep the – I'm sure they know when you're uptight and things like that, so the relationship – is not only between you and the dog, but it's also like part of your family there. So. Oh, they are part of the family, yes. They go everywhere with us. But I, I also am carrying sort of the hopes of the poodle population, yeah. as it were. Yeah. Um, and that, that adds to the anxiety. Um, but um, the, the dogs themselves really are keen in that they understand uh, where they are. They understand what you're doing. And I just try to be as calm as I can. And this year it worked out for me. Well, now, people, a lot of folks don't realize, poodles, one of the genetic traits of a poodle is they are, I'm going to say, overly intelligent. And when you talk it, you know, uh-huh. poodles are extremely intelligent, which isn't necessarily the best thing for dog training. Jack? Explain that. Yeah, you got a minute to explain that in one minute. We got it. <laughs> okay. Um, it is difficult. Sometimes um, in the lab world, we're using repetition over and over and over. You're, yeah. you're basically drilling something into a dog. Yeah. Uh, poodles tend to get bored, so you need to develop <laughs> games. They, 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 they're very smart, so they develop, you need to develop games to teach them something uh, re- rather than simply repetition. Well, I've I've watched the video and uh, of the event themselves, and uh, Jack, always great to have you on the show. Uh, uh, great to have Frank as my good friend here, and uh, you taking time to be with us. And uh, I know how much Frank loves what he does, and I obviously you do that too, folks. Just Google Jack Combs and and look at this poodle, and we're going to post the picture on on my website. Uh, you'll be able to see it. A uh, beautiful dog, and. Uh, Job well done. Thank you, Jack. You have a great weekend, okay? Thank you, sir. And congratulations, Frank. Thank you. All right, let's take a break on Outdoors of Larry Ray and be right back.